Part of the fun of going through any game is getting the opportunity to get new equipment or abilities to change up gameplay a bit, whether it's unlocking a new skill, playable character, new item, what have you. In Devil May Cry, you get your first item almost immediately out of the door of Mission 2. After finding a statue, you are handed the first of many new weapons. This is Alastor, and is likely the weapon you'll be using the most for the rest of the game. DMC is all about gradually opening up the door for the player, and letting them deeper into a room full of possibility and self-expression. And this is shown off through the abilities and items you get throughout the game's 20 or so missions. Each will provide a slightly different way to play, and in the case of Alastor, will give you access to lightning abilities, new moves to unlock, and most importantly, access to Dante's Devil Trigger. We'll go over Devil Trigger in a later bit. Going further, you will obtain another key, as well as a shotgun, which will also likely replace your pistols for the rest of the game. I mean, there's a reason these two are featured on the damn cover art. Continuing on, you'll reach more rooms with more puppets, finish the mission, and move on to mission 3, where you'll face off against your first challenge of the game, Phantom. When I mean challenge, I really mean to say that the game is telling you you are about to be cyberbullied, and definitely not for the last time either. So far, your main obstacles have been a room full of puppet fodder and the occasional wonky platforming bit, but going into this fight with Phantom, I welcome the shakeup to the difficulty. What I got, however, was pain and suffering I was in no shape prepared for. True to this game's reputation of being a tough-as-nails action game, DMC will give you no insights as to what strategy you should be using, and why would it? You are Dante after all. You did get stabbed, like, at least two times already. And you do have an M for mature rating. You can figure out what to do about one simple boss, right? Right? Wrong! This boss will kick your ass and laugh when you ask if you're doing something wrong. You have little room for error or experimentation, because you either figure out a strategy or you get blasted. You will die to this boss on your first run, I guarantee it. Eventually, you can learn that his plump and soft spicy bits underneath his rock-hard outside is his weak point, so you can jump on his back and attack it directly, or if you're a gamer, use Devil Trigger to overpower him and do damage that way. I did neither of these things. I instead thought it best to jump, do a helm splitter attack on his back, one jump at a time, until he died. This used all of my support items, and I knew that after this, the game was done being my pal. Despite that, the game decided it best to offer me journalist mode in case I wasn't up for the challenge. What? Easy automatic mode? While I despised that fight, I do appreciate the, the ability to- oh my god. <laughs> I do appreciate the ability to try the game's difficulty first before it offers you the option to switch. A nice touch I'm sure plenty of people did back in the day. After running back with the item I got from Phantom, you'll eventually come across the game's real challenge. Oh, you thought I said the spider was bad? You sweet summer child, of course it's not! This is where you come across Shadow. This unholy cross between a cat and Capcom's personal spite against me? I take it back. This is where you will die. Phantom cannot be damaged by any standard melee attacks and instead must be shot in order to reveal its weak point where it can truly be damaged. So get your gat on that cat because you will need to be pumping lead into this thing consistently in order to take it down. Unfortunately for me, however, I did not get the memo and was killed in about five seconds. What? From here, DMC has decided that cyberbullying isn't enough these days, and proceeds to put a bat to your kneecaps. After losing all your yellow orbs and getting a game over, you will then be sent to the last save point. Normally this isn't that bad, seeing as how you can save at any given point in time, but Devil May Cry doesn't play by ordinary rules and is readying that bat. You go back to the game's save point, which is at the beginning of each level. This means you complete a level in one go or you get real familiar with this screen. Now of course I started this mission with someone throwing salt into my eyes, so naturally that's what greeted me on each subsequent run. Eventually however I did learn from my mistakes and learned to deal with this kidney stone of an enemy fairly reliably. After which you'll ascend a tower into a room overlooking a courtyard. Investigating this room will lead to a Dante doppelganger appearing from a mirror will then take a more demonic yet somewhat familiar form. After taunting you into following him, the two of you clash in the courtyard to one of the best songs in the series. I am not kidding, this song is so good, this is why they brought it back for Devil May Cry.
this guy, Nello Angelo, is practically a copy of Dante in every way, with many of the same moves as you. While difficult, he is fair and only requires you to stay on your toes to keep an eye out for an opening. Dying to him, however, means, you guessed it, get chased by Phantom, kill the Shadow Cat, climb the tower, and try again. If you aren't sensing a pattern yet, let me spell it out. This game can require near perfection at times, and repetition is a close friend to perfection. You'll be consistently on your toes to make progress here, and losing your edge means you lose progress. While I'm not opposed to difficult games by any means, part of this game's difficulty definitely stems from being a product of its time. 